Hello everybody. So this unit is really looking at how different people approach the environment, view the environment, and uh, I thought it would be useful for us to look at, you know, one of the main uh, shapers of a lot of people's lives is uh, their religion and their religious viewpoint. So uh, right away in chapter page 17 of your book, um, there's this quote here. Until recently, religious communities have been so absorbed in internal sectarian affairs that they were unaware of the magnitude of the environmental concerns facing the world. Um, and I really found this um, this quote to be unfair. Um, you know, I don't know what the viewpoints of the authors of this book are, but I think it's just um, really kind of cheapening what a lot of people are believing, and um, it's not a fair to say this of religious people. So um, I wanted to, you know, dive a little bit deeper into, um, you know, three or four of the main religions that we find in this, uh, find on earth, and see how they're um, viewing the, their approach to the environment, seeing how they're um, think about conservation issues and and things like that and but I, what I w do want to say is I'm not advocating for any one religion um, I will say I've, you know being from the US I have much more familiarity with Christianity as opposed to Hinduism but um, you know that that's just from uh, you know my experience now so, but let's let's dive into um, some different viewpoints that some, some people have, um, different religions have. So Hinduism, um, there's a lot actually in, um, in Hinduism about protecting the environment. Um, it's one of their main duties is to protect the environment, protect what, uh, what they have and the, the place that they are. Um, the idea of karma, where your actions in the environment will can you know this idea of karma that things that you do will come back to you you know how you treat the world is how you will be treated and we can see that um, a lot of hindu scholars will say that how people are impacting the environment is a big part of karma um there's a lot of um that there's an earth goddess in hinduism where um, they're, you know, basically saying that the earth needs to be protected, devoted to, um, and, um, thought that, you know, the earth is basically thought of as a god here. And, um, building a little bit on the interconnectedness idea that we talked about in the last chapter, um, I think that, you know, that's really taken to the extreme in the Hindu religion where they have the idea of reincarnation, where, um, you are, you know, people, their, their idea is that when people literally die, they're coming back as potentially a different form of life. So that really shows some um, interconnected, um, you know, how people might per be perceiving the, um, the world. Then there's, uh, plenty of, um, examples of in Hindu religion of rituals that take place in natural environments and a lot of things have having to do with water but again I'm not super familiar with the Hindu religion um, what we do see is Judaism and Christianity share you know a lot have a lot in common and I think um, this quote from here first book of the Bible is um, then God bless them, speaking of Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves in the earth. Um, I think these are, um, in the Christian and Juda Judaism tradition, this is, um, the first words that are spoken to humans after their creation, right? And I think it's, um, interesting to think about, well, what does that word dominion mean, okay? And a lot of people think of it like this, right? So this is King Joffrey from Game of Thrones, and his idea of dominion was 
he can do whatever he wants with his subjects, with his kingdom. And it doesn't matter and no consequences, right? And I think that is really not the meaning of dominion. What we see is when you when you look at the word definition, the word dominion, it's really meaning a caretaker, okay? And I don't know if you know this, but there is a patron saint of ecology, St. Francis of Assisi. He lived from 1181 to 1226. And a previous pope, um, John Paul II, so that was, what, two or three popes ago, um, said that it is my hope that the inspiration of St. Francis will help us to keep ever alive a sense of fraternity with all those good and beautiful things which Almighty God has created. So um, I think, you know, there has been, certainly throughout times, lots of people that have been promoting the ideas of conserving and protecting nature, even though um, through their their Christian or religious beliefs. I think recently we've seen some um, uh, some environmental movements in the uh, evangelical community, uh, for specifically the Christian evangelical community, where they're thinking about, uh, you know, that there was a, uh, this is 10, 15 years ago now, but the uh, what would Jesus drive movement. It was trying to get people to be um, using more fuel efficient cars so that they could um, you know, save the planet basically through what car they're driving. Um, then there's all sorts of organizations that are um, Christian based that are looking at um, trying to sustain. So this Lutheran World Relief here is looking at trying to sustain development to help people live in their environments and um, not just think of this dominion as uh, do whatever you want with the environment. I think probably one of the most clear um, cases of religion, you know, showing environmentalist um, practices is probably Buddhism, right? Uh, a lot of people um, in the Buddhist religion will um, have the, a deep respect for the environment and trying to, um, or at least what, what is taught is that there's um, all living things have value and we need to be loving towards them. There are even there are certain sects of Buddhist monks that will uh, walk around with a broom sweeping bugs away from their feet so they don't step on, kill a bug. Um, so um, and maybe Buddhist is one of the, mo the most environmental religion. I, maybe not, but um, let's move on then to Islam. Islam is... Um, a lot of Islamic scholars will say that uh, because of the where Islam originated in the Middle East, that there is a lot of talk about clean water, and because water was such a um, you know, important part of life, especially in the, the dry environment that a lot of the Middle East is, is so there's a lot of talk in the Quran in other writings of other scholars that saying, um, I like this quote here, there is no joy in life unless three things are available, clean, fresh air, abundant, pure water, and fertile land. So, I mean, that um, kind of sets up a lot of what we're going to be talking about in this class. But, um, you know, I think Islam has the most uh, overt water protection, again, probably just because of where the where the religion originated in water stressed areas. So um, there's been this idea floating around that, you know, the religions in the past, you know, 30, 40 years have been responding to this idea of a, you know, environmentalism. Um, I think this, this is a quote from, um, uh, a Muslim scholar in um, in Britain, it says, it is paradoxical that the extensive reference to conservation and environmental stewardship in the Quran and Hadith are not reflected in the actual behavior of many Muslims in Britain. 
Um, I think this is unfair to only say this about Muslims. It really applies to any religion, right? There's plenty of hypocritical people that are saying one thing that we want to protect the environment and their actions reflect something very different, right? Whether that is um, in in Islam here, whether it's in Hinduism or Christianity or whatever, it, it, it really applies to any religion. Uh, you know, a perfect example is, and I'm not trying to pick again here on Hinduism, but a lot of Hindu practices are revolving around rivers. So here is um, the, uh, about um, Hindu people practicing uh, their rituals in the in the river here, and literally, you know, just upstream from this picture is someone burning trash and dead bodies upstream of the river. Um, so, you know, if the river is so sacred, why are they doing, you know, potentially very harmful things to it? And, that, and you know, that's just an example of whatever religion we're going to be talking about, even non-religious people, um, we're going to have hypocritical people that are teaching one thing, saying one thing, and actually doing the other.